Hello and welcome to this uh, final chapter, final space, I suppose you could say, in our map design and drawing. <clears throat> I do have a little bit of a uh, frog in the throat, as they say, so please bear with me. Now, all we have to do is basically finish off this yellow area and uh, make it look pretty and uh, put in our city over there. And uh, then we, we're pretty much done. So, again, what I like about drawing maps over a period of days, and this is now day three that I've returned to the map, is it gives you an opportunity to look at it and reflect upon it and say, well, we've got the Elvish city here or some arboreal based um, civilization there. We've got this major citadel thing here with some fields. We've got the inverted mountain. We've got the ziggurat. We've got this city in the sludge growing fields. What should this area be? And um, if this is going to be an area for a starting group of uh, dungeoneers or characters or a starting group of role players for that matter, then this can become a training ground if you like. So maybe one or two things of curiosity but um, nothing major, nothing hectic like down here for example um, or even in the yeah, Shattered Fjord area. So <clears throat> let's move in now. We're going to create a new layer as we usually do and I think we can call this um, Main City. Right, so Main City we're going to go in on and zoom in there. Now the trick with Main City is that I want Main City to be the sprawling metropolis um, that um, just sort of goes on in all different directions and I want it to feel quite different from our city over here which is pointed roofs, spires and that kind of thing. So I'm going to come back here and um, start drawing. Now I don't think Um, so I'm going to start drawing a little square um, mud-like houses here. I, I'm not sure what these are going to be, but um, something like that. Make sure that each one feels different. So we get a sense of uh, maybe a different race lives here. We can put in some sort of pitched roofs and things that people are familiar with what they're seeing. And uh, they just realize that there's different races that cohabit this space. Uh, let's do a domed building like that. Brickwork on it or something, and then a square building coming off the side, going in like that. Again, this is more for effect than accuracy or style or anything like that. So, structure. Hoping my pen and tablet would have arrived by this uh, recording session, but um, customs have held it up. Uh, so I think it's being used to smuggle drugs or something. A flat tablet bed and a small pen. I can see their concern straight away. Uh, uh, let's do that. Animations. I'll just draw lines there to create this gatekeep of some kind here. And, uh, and let's do another pointed structure. So 
where the road actually comes in, so I think we should probably cover that. Road sorted out now. What people live here is, I don't know what the general population is entirely up to you. Um, obviously, but it does look the same thing, just so wondering. But I just hate maps where everything is. Uniform, uh, it doesn't matter where they are, and you go, Well, do they, do they have the same, same architectural style? Because that doesn't make sense. And again, um, a question is asked what makes this city different from that city? Um, and if your answer is, Well, the buildings are exactly the same, you, you've missed out. They can be similar. Hence me putting in the triangular roofs, but you want them to be sufficiently different enough that when you describe it, people go, oh yes, that city. Um, that city. All right, now I am going to... How can I put this delicately? I'm going to cheat um, in terms of the city design. And... Um, Resort is something that I did, well, it's a city that exists in my campaign world. This will be a smaller version of it, so almost the proof of concept city, where there's lots of towers that make up the city, so it's not a single castle. It's these large towers which dominate the skyline. The city in question was called Quethlin, City of Secrets. Each of the towers represents a, a house of elves that vie for power within the city. And so they build these towers to try and show off their ability and their capacity and all that sort of thing. Um, a lot of fun political intrigue and that kind of stuff can happen within that. This city is not nearly big enough for anything as dramatic as that, but, well, perhaps it could be a foreshadowing, you know, some, if we put in a few towers, not as many as, as Quethlin was supposed to have had, um, then um, giving our players something to do, giving ourselves plenty of plot options, which is again, one of the main goals is, is for you to be inspired by these uh, cities, not necessarily your players. Because um, if you're inspired, they should be inspired too, right? That's the theory. And I'm sticking to that. Established that gates in this city are the portcullis of a kind, something like that. And we're going to put in a big tower here. Now, each of these towers in the setting, anyway, controlled a different aspect of the city. So one controlled food, one controlled grain. Uh, one controlled um, 
magic and magical items and textiles and so it, it really was just a space um, for the players to be able to just experience a whole variety of cultures and the one that um, controlled magic wanted to have a piece of the live stock um, pie and vice versa you know there's, there's always the usual the usual kind of conflicts that um, that arise from multiple powerful entities all wanting the same kind of resources and things and uh, that made for a lot of fun as the players will play each house against each other um, to try and get as much as they could out of these rather interesting people um, so I'm going to put out here that's inspired me. Great cattle pens of the city. All that stuff I brought in to be sold, judged, kept. Stolen unless the, unless the PC is doing the stealing or preventing the stealing from happening. There's a request straight away, which again is not what makes me happy. Yes, that is my version of the cow. Jabba the Hutt feeling towers as they grow and expand again we've got a gate here but it leads into the side of one of these um, towers so we don't have to worry too much about Port Kali and all that sort of dickety boo South African local vernacular word, Zulu word, would be kraal, K-R-A-A-L, a kraal, which is where the cattle were herded and kept at night to keep them safe from wildlife and predators and thieves. And uh, you keep the type of a wooden structure, well, bits of wood they find in the local areas, uh, frequently Caches, which are covered in thorns, that would make an excellent barrier um, to keep people out. Just a little bit of city down here. Alright, I think we are progressing quite nicely with our Tsar city here.
players really shouldn't be interrogating your um, city too closely, so um, if they do, then just nod and smile and say, well, yes, it took you a long time to draw it, and you're very appreciative that they're taking the time to interrogate and set them all on fire. No, I have no idea what the structure is. This is this is a mess. Some kind of symbol, or church, or something. I, I have no idea what it is. It's on the outskirts because no one likes it. Okay, let's do another tower up here. a city I, I, I don't know I mean you could you could just put in generic city shape and I, I I have done that before I really have but I think when you're doing these kind of these these kinds of maps where the emphasis is on um, a smaller scale I feel you have to pay attention to every part of the map, um, not just the geography. And I think, yes, this is not laying out the city whatsoever. I mean, whether there's a street or a, it's totally, totally, totally unclear. Um, but that's not that's not the purpose of the map. It's not a city map. It's a location map. Um, but this gives us enough to work on that we want to visit this place, possibly. Um, our characters want to come here um, because it looks like it could just be this phenomenal space um, where adventure is is on the cards and uh, it's just waiting to be to be explored. stories high, 20 stories high. Um, I mean, we are in an age of magic, so they could be any any size. Uh, when you can shape stone, you don't really care. Now that circle at the top, which I just drew because I forgot to put the dome in, that could be the execution pit, where it's a cylinder that runs all the way down the length of the tower. And inside, and, and at the bottom is, say, spikes or a betting pool, most likely on the size of the splash the person will make when they when they land. Um, that's just something that comes to mind straight away. Um, you know, so that makes this a rather interesting city where now suddenly there's this mega consequence. If you get caught, your only punishment is dropping down the pit. So you provide entertainment for those living here. Uh, income for those that like to bet 
on splash size or bounce or you know, whether they'll survive or not. Um, I think that could be quite could be quite fun actually. Um, as an option, um, I'm going to leave this space blank here. Hopefully, I will be rewarded for my insanity. And the idea why I'm putting these different sort of symbols on top is that um, each tower represents a different house or a different power, um, if you like. <coughs> and that's just a way of reminding myself that that's the plan. town square I'm going to put a statue of something um, yeah, it's just, oh. <clears throat> it is a statue of a a thing a bird perhaps or something that sits in a fountain. I, um, it's a statue. It's a thing. It sits there. It's proud of itself. It is not afraid to be a statue. It is just a statue. And Anyone who says otherwise um, is just being mean. <laughs> because it's clearly a statue. Uh, this is a family who um, wanted a tower but couldn't afford the, uh, the base size. I, I honestly don't. So nearly done with the city, which makes me happy. Uh, not that I mind drawing the city, but um, this for me is always the most tricky part: is finishing a map and not just going, "Oh, I'll make it up as the players get there." Um, I, I certainly have been known to do that from time to time. So I'm using the pointed roof here just to separate between the towers so that it doesn't feel like it's just all these square blocks um, making a very sort of modern city-like. Two more towers here.
ですよね。ねそれでは、このスプロールメトロポリス、which looks very different from the square one over there, still at the same time has a certain familiarity to it. It also doesn't have any walls around it, and I did that on purpose because not all cities necessarily have these walls that、uh, are needed to protect them. And the question is then, how does the city protect itself? Well, I think.、Um, The question more is, does the city need to protect itself? And the answer is, I don't think so.、Um, this is our beginning adventure area, so I think it's, it's、uh, perfectly acceptable to have it as just this space. Now, if I go in here, I'm going to do something just off the side.、Um, I'm going to have a road coming out here, which is going to lead. That's good. And this is going to be some kind of、um, standing stone circle. As you will.、Um, I'm not going to try and draw this in three dimensions、uh, because. Drawing a circle. Well, let's try. Let's try. Let's try. Let's see what we can do. Let's see what comes out of here somehow. Alright, well, we can live with that. I mean, it, it gives us sense. Should have done them as a standing circle of Meneers. That would have been easier. But not nearly as impressive. I always get a runt from a standing circle. Frequently or a t e n s i v e Mess. Yeah, close enough. And we'll put a few more of these little doohickeys. I'm not sure what these are, but they look like they should be there. Like, again, that's something to inspire one. Right? 
quite low foothills all around it. like a circle of standing stones if you ask me. Alright, down here I think we've got to do the same um, wheel system as we did before, just because well, the city's got to survive and unless you're playing paying the clerics a fortune in gold Truly, truly do not see how a city can survive without a fortune. Now, I could have drawn the fields in a different way. I hear some of you saying, oh, but what should they lay out differently? Um, I could have, but I didn't because I didn't think about it. And now I'm rushing off to work, so um, I'm not going to come back and do this, I'm afraid. I might. I might not. Um, but yes, if you wanted it to feel different, think of the rice paddies that you see in those pictures of China um, versus cornfields in, say, America versus... Um, rows and little fields of sheep in England. Um, very different styles um, of land control and usage. Um, all right, I think, I think if I saw this City. I'd be satisfied that there's enough growing around it to people um, are going to be coming in through there, so no really feels there. Uh, to supply it. The nice thing about fields is that they the almost the quintessential. Outdoor starter, isn't it? Oh, please come and help me. My fields are under attack by beetles. Oh my god, beetles. How do you deal with it when you don't have adventurers wandering around? You just let them munch down now. You've probably got some sort of system in place. But the adventurers are there. You might as well use them. And if they die, well, it's okay. Alright, so we've got some fields there. We've got some fields there. Let's talk about that. Yeah. About the same size. A little bit smaller, that's okay. Alright. And I think... I think... Uh, this river needs to finish off in the city. That... And uh, maybe it flows through this... Oh! Oh, this would be a sludge fist. So I'm going to run it down here. I mean, they, they really would be fetid flowing through the cattle 
feels like that, that would be absolutely the mankest things ever. Um, that really would be nasty. Um, nasty, nasty feels. Oops. You'll see now what I do to make this look a little bit more water-like and not just this weird V collection is I then do this same effect that I did for the sludge um, as a matter of fact just to me it indicates water slick anky nasty Swamps of despair. These would be known as the reeking swamps, if anything. Not this I would like. Visit. And there we have it. Our map, I think, is complete. I'm happy for rolling hills and things to permeate all over the place. So there we have our completed map all that we need to do now of course is to draw out the um, names that will go onto this map and something that you must decide upon is how that's going to look so in the uh, last installment of this video which I'll hopefully record tonight we will do the naming of the map and uh, then we'll be done with a map that our players can have fun in for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and uh, hopefully a map that we can have fun in for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. So, uh, here we go. Naming is next. Right, now we get on to labeling and naming and that fun section of the map which I always enjoy doing. But before we do that, we're going to give our map a little border. So I'm going to select the crop tool, make sure my colors here are black and white. And I'm going to open this out. A little bit to uh, use my I'm using my crop tool to draw a very rough border it doesn't have to be uh, equal by any stretch of the imagination all right so we're gonna do that I come down to this uh, background layer here get my selection mask draw a very loose box around my map that I drew create a new layer and uh, fill that layer up with white. You can see it's there. <laughs> and Control D gets rid of the selection layer and blending options. And stroke gives me a nice edge around the map. And um, I can live with that. I think that, that'll work quite nicely. Uh, you can do all sorts of things in the border if you like. You can go in and draw the shields of the different areas. You can lines uh, there's all sorts of things you can do um, a common one is to to draw a alternating bands of color if you so so choose um, I'm just gonna go with a simple black border um, I don't need it to have very much more so I'm back to the crop tool I'm just gonna neaten up these edges so that when it prints it prints roughly in the center of the page um, yeah, we'll do something like that. All right, so that's now nice and neat. Now we go in and we can design our name. Now, this is a black and white map, so names are going to be difficult to see. If I were to just um, make sure black is my top color, if I were to select text and type in name, name. Is my uh, here we go. Uh, might went in there, I don't know, but that name's a little bit big. I think you'll agree with me. That's probably more in the size that we um, want it to be. If we just do it black like that, oh, maybe it'll work. Maybe that's too, though. This is a hundred percent. I think that's too. 
uh, it's also the definitely the wrong font, but it's also a little bit dull for a map like this. Uh, if we were to change the font, I mean, we can uh, change it however we want, whatever sort of fonts you've got loaded up. Um, I've got a few that would work quite nicely, maybe this uh, Packard Antique. Again, though, uh, we'll make it more that size. That looks a little bit more in keeping with the, the theme. But, um, in convoluted areas, you won't really see it too well. And this area is quite fine, but if we come down here, we might run into trouble. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over here where I've got a nice big blank space. And uh, just check that I'm happy with that size. So control minus. Move the cursor away. Actually, that can come down uh, in size. If I were to make that smaller, let's go to size 12, which is usual print size, size 11 actually. Uh, yes, I can live with that. All right, good. So now underneath that, I'm going to create a new layer, and we're going to call this layer banner. And um, I'm going to zoom in here to uh, our name. And uh, let's say um, we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, face 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That's the longest name. Uh, this is not a name. This is just me typing out numbers. That is the longest name that we will accept on this map. And we'd probably insist that this goes way down there. All right. Um, this should be set to auto. Right, so there we go. So, so that is probably the biggest name that we will have, size name that we will have. So, back to banner, and now I'm going to draw in the same width, the same thickness that I have used before. I'm going to draw very roughly, and again, there's no right way or wrong way to do this. You can choose how you want to do it and how elaborately you want to do it. But it's just about drawing what looks to be like an old school hanging banner. Something like that. Now I know this line is going to bite me if I have a longer name. So I'm going to erase this. That was too dramatic. Just erase that. Come in here. And just do something a little bit less. A little bit less. Then if I wanted to, I could put maybe um, like a a nail detail to change your brush size if you've forgotten. You can nail there and a nail there so it feels like they've sort of stabbed it onto the map. Something like that. Yeah, I think that looks pretty cool. Quite fun. Okay, so now this is our banner, and we're going to use this throughout. But um, the very first one that we need to do, and I've got a space down there for it, I'm going to take this banner, I'm going to copy it by holding the Alt key and dragging while the Alt key is still held down. Grab the wrong thing there, I grabbed the text, didn't I? So let's come back to banner. I'm going to grab the banner, hopefully. No, no. Oh, yes, the banner is empty. So, something to bear in mind is, do we want the banner? We need to fill up the banner first before we do anything else. So I'm going to grab my paint tool. 
I come back to banner, I'm going to do that. That should have filled it up. So that I can grab it now. And A. Yay, got it. Right, so I can grab my banner and bring it down to here. That's not actually where I'm going to be. I want to be away. Oh, be about here. And I want it to continue. Because it is this is the name of our whole map. So I'm going to approximate. Curvy. Sort of shape. There. And a bit of a torn shape. this for anything other than decoration. So there's a more important name of this area. So now the time has come for us to sit upon the ground and tell tales of the of kings. Um, now it comes down to naming this map. That's always tricky but if you've got an area that you know this is going to fit into it's a lot easier. I don't. This was just a made as we needed. So I'm going to say that this area is known as this area is known as Arkin Look at that. Scuppered. Thought I'd been smarter than that. Clearly not. I had hoped for this to fit. Maybe it's not centered. I'd have to make it smaller if I wanted to. Now, my alternative is to grab this, uh, this banner and stretch it out a bit make it fit. I've got the room to do so, so I'm going to do that um, so that this can fit in there better. And, uh, I had originally done. I'm using my arrow keys on my keyboard to move around and I can live with that. Arkenvale and surrounds. The and surrounds I'm going to actually reduce in size. It's 12 point. I'm going to make it maybe 10 points. Um, because Arkenvale is the important thing. And I'm pretty happy with that. Live. There we go. Arkenvale and surrounds, and it's nice and clear on the map. Well, actually, if I go in, I can grab this. Holding down the shift key plus that, I should move that down to about there, I think. That's a bit better. Gives it a bit more space. its own, own thing. Yeah, we can work with that. Right, so that brings us now to the fun part where we get to name everything. So 
this. Uh, let's start there. Move this up here. Where's an unimportant piece of geography? There, I think. So those things, I think we can call them foresty, something woody, something like something fey. Um, well, it's always an interesting question. Um, if you haven't watched my video on how to come up with names, I suggest you go and have a look at it, but I suggest I have a look at it too. <laughs> All right, so let's say we want a play on, um, let's say we want to play on Wood Elves. So I'm writing down the word off screen, Wood Elves. I'm going to change some letters. Done my bit, but clearly I haven't. So all the lowercase will have to be ten points. And upper will have to be twelve. Did I do that? Why didn't it change? I hate it. Alright, so the what of us happens in the Wadivas I have no idea. Something. Something lives in the Wadivas Protectorate. Okay. Then we might again holding down shifts so that I can select these uh, them at the same time. Shift now I'm let go of shift and holding alt and move that down here. to the eastern marches out in that direction. Need to name the swamp. Yeah. This we can name. So this was or is Elevator to hell? Well, originally it would have just been the elevator or lift. Uh, lift down the cliff. So the cliff elevator or the cliff, the cliff lift. The cliff lift becomes Loft. Cliff loft. Cliff loft. Cliff loft. There we go. Cliff loft. Don't need 
uh, blow up. Cliff loft, just like that. Shift to X to take it down here. This is the city of What am I doing? What do we call this place? Arkenvale. This should be Arkenvale, then, surely. Stones. Maybe. The benefit we have is we can always come back. Um, so Stonehenge. Said, the bottom one always gets reduced down to 10. Like that. Right, so I'm going to carry on making my way around, just labeling up these uh, faces. Okay, let's have a look and see. Did we miss anything critical? And does it look too overpopulated? I don't think so. I think it's kind of filled it up quite nicely, giving us a almost a computer game-like feel. But at the same time, I think there's enough information without giving away too much. And at the same time, there's enough to tempt players. Gelder's mine, not smine. Elder's Mine, for example. Langhas Lodge. Uh, Narwin Fjords, Deathland, Corpseland, Sarret. The Meat Camp. Cliff Loft, Arkenvale to the Each Monsters. Vadivas Protectorate, Wadi. Uh, the Eye of Ordefus. Ulkatruts Prison, Guten Gate. Strangen Lake. Uh, I think this is 
this is enough for the players to play around with and to, to get a feel of this place. I think also what I tried to do was to keep this mountain range almost a, um, a line between this type of naming convention, uh, which was a bit more Germanic, and uh, the forest a little bit uh, more romantic, and of course then this side a little bit more English, Cliff Loft, Arken Vale, Sarit, those kinds of, of, of names and things to, to, to try and create a little bit of a differentiator. Um, and um, I think that's done. All that remains to be done now is to put in a scale. So I'm going to come down here as our last act. And a solid line. I'm going to create a new layer as huge, as huge brew as they would say in my home country, in the lower areas. I'm going to draw a line there. I'm going to grab my pen tool, make sure it's black, and uh, just increase its size back to what I was using. And I'm going to draw very badly inside there and sort of fill it in, but not. And you'll see when I press Control D, the effect, what happens when we shrink it down. So I'm just grabbing the controllers to do that. I'm applying the transformation. And all it does is it just makes it look as if it's more of a drawn line without me having to actually try and draw a relatively straight line. This is going to be our, our measuring stick. So now is the opportunity for us to decide just how far is it? Is this a mile? Is this two miles? Is it 10 miles? I think I'm going to make it. I think I'm going to make this scale. How far would that be? Quite some distance. Yes, I'm going to make this scale two miles. So if every one of these it's two miles now I'm coming back to my pen tool. I'm going to draw arrow on this end and an arrow on this end something like that oops where's my eraser there we go arrow point there we go I'm happy with that thing up underneath two lines end to end and let's just make that size ten Two looks a bit weak in this font, so I'm going to make it 12 is a bit better. I can live with 12, it makes it feel a little bit more equal. I have that slight offset. Do as a matter of fact. There we can see that we've got two miles, so we're looking at two, four, six, maybe seven miles to Cliff Loft from Sadat. And then a mere two miles from Arkenvale to Cliftloft. Um, clearly, Arkenvale, oh, maybe the scale is going to have to change if I think about it now. Because Arkenvale is going to need a lot of farming land. And if that is only half a mile, that's not a lot of fields whatsoever. So then we need to change this up and make it, say, five miles. And that is that. That is how I draw my maps for my players when I do draw maps. I hope this has been helpful and giving you some insight and some idea as to how you could do it yourself. And I thank you for bearing with me all the way through to the end. So I wish you and yours the very happiest of drawing. And uh, if you want a copy of this map, it was given out to Patreons this month as their uh, reward for... Uh, being part of the channel, I suppose, and uh, for 
helping us uh, get all the fun tools and things that we need to in order to make these kinds of videos. So until next time, again, the happiest of drawing and even happier gaming thereafter. Thank you.